In this lesson, we're going to learn how to transform objects and geometry in 3D space. So let's take the um, rubber toy, and we're going to select the Move tool, which gives us a move handle. We can then constrain along, let's say, um, the Z direction or the X direction using those handles. Uh, Control Z to undo. We can also use this little square to constrain in X and Z at the same time to sort of move along the ground. That's very useful. And um, let's see what happens. Um, let's go to a four view system and see what happens if we click in the center of that handle. So we're going to sync up these views so we can get a sense of what's going on. And what's going to happen is as we move the central handle, we're going to move along the camera plane, which means it's going to go sort of all over the place and it's going to appear to go all over the place in the different views. And it's really just the camera plane that we're working with. Now, if we don't want to do that, we can undo. And if we want to work on the ground, we can turn on a construction plane. And that will then take over from the camera plane. And that's where we're moving the object now. So that might be a little bit easier to work with. So don't forget the construction plane when you're doing this kind of thing. You can also press the Shift key and lift up from the construction plane. And then if we start moving at this point, you can see a little line just projected down showing us where we are in relation to that plane. So we're still working along the plane, but a little higher up. With rotating, uh, we can constrain or we can just go free. The, the, the sphere works as a sort of a free bubble to, to, to go around. And scaling, the center scales on all axes, and the, uh, or we can go one axis only. Now, if we don't like what we've done so far, we can go back to here and right click and revert to defaults. We can do that for all of these if we want. There's also a hotkey for that. Control, control middle mouse button. Uh, so now there's different tools like the Pose tool, which is used a little bit more for animation. The Handle tool, which sort of gives us access to all the handles at the same time. Um, and if we go to the Scale tool, uh, or sorry, let's look at the Pose tool. The Y key lets us tumble between all of those. Uh, similarly, if we were in the Handle tool, which shows us all those handles, the Y key would also tumble, let us go th through those different options as well. So in, it, it, um, that's a little bit different than pressing the, uh, the hotkeys for move and rotate and scale. So now let's uh, zoom out a little bit, step back. And what we're going to do is we're going to press K to set a keyframe uh, and just show a little bit about what the Pose tool can do in relation to uh, transformations in the animation space. And keyframe again, now we've got those two keyframes. Let's go a little bit in the middle and um, do a bit of rotation. And we'll press K on that. And we'll go over to here and rotate a little bit in the other direction and press K there. And so we got a little movement sort of bobbing back and forth as this character moves. Now we can turn on a motion path handle that is unique to the pose tool. And it allows us to literally grab those points and move them to further refine the results. So we're able to move where the object is in time, even if it's not at that particular time, using these handles. And we can also uh, bring up tangents so that we can really reshape that curve and get it to do exactly what we want it to do. Uh, and that's very, very useful. And we can also go into ribbon mode, which then tackles the orientation or the rotation. So we can go there and say, well, where do we want that to be rotated um, as he goes through that area? So the rotations we keyframed earlier are represented by this ribbon mode. And there we go. So we want to bank that way instead. Then there we go. We're going to go that way and then whoo, sweep through. So it's very useful to uh, have this tool available uh, for this. If we want to be a little more dramatic, maybe go the opposite way there. Um, so he's going to go in and really swoop up, up and down and over. There we go. So we can turn on the grid, off the grids, if we want to see that a little bit better. Um, that allows us to focus on that. And the thing about this handle is, um, you know, you can easily uh, turn it off, turn off ribbon mode. Uh, and if you want to, you can go up to there and just turn it off there if you want to evaluate the character sort of on it, on its own without the without that motion path. But anyways, that's the pose tool, which has some unique abilities you won't find in the other handles. The next thing we want to do is look at the squab. Spacebar B will let us go big on this. And we want to talk a little bit about pivots, rotational pivots, scaling pivots. 
And so if we go to look at this object, there's the handle for moving. And if we go to rotate, uh, there's the handle there, again, right in the center. Now, if we want to move that to a different position, we can right click and go down to pivot mode. Once we've got pivot mode, we can use this handle to push that to the back, and maybe lift that up a little bit to be right near where the tail is. We then right click again to get pivot mode off. And now if we press R, uh, we can rotate off that pivot instead of the original pivot. And you'll see that the pivot has been reflected in, there's parameters in the parameter pane to represent the, move, the, mo the movement of the pivot. Um, and you can do that a little more accurately if you want to type exact numbers in. Uh, let's go in to go to the geometry level and say how would we do something similar at the geometry level. It's a little different here. We're going to select three points. And if we were to go R for rotate, we get an edit node. But right now we're pivoting just off the center of the selection. Uh, instead of going to pivot mode, we're going to go to a detach the geometry. We're going to do a pivot uh, or a snapping to points, snap that to there, and then we're going to turn attach geometry back off. And now we are able to pivot there. So this uses a different method because we don't need a fixed pivot. We just need a temporary pivot to do the edit that we need to do. So the attach geometry is the way to do that when editing in Houdini. And there we go. So that's how we get that kind of edit um, at the geometry level. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, bring up the pig's head. And uh, we're going to look at the edit node a little bit more and how it can do transformations um, and what that means, a transformation with an edit node versus uh, another node in Houdini. So again, if we're at the object level and we want to go, we're going to pick point selection. Uh, now, we don't have that object selected. You've got to have the object selected, uh, go to pivot mode, and then go in. And then you can go or double click in, and now you can start editing those points. So we're going to press T to get a translate handle, and we can push that up a little bit. Oh, it's doing some snapping. Let's not do snapping. Um, let's raise that up, and let's use this um, soft uh, radius to sort of soften the blow of that um, so it gets nice and, you know, soft uh, fall off really nicely there. Now there's a whole bunch of tools up at the top in the operation controls bars that offer different ways of doing editing and we're going to start we're right now turn off um, secure selection. We're going to do some edits specifically tied to these different options. So this is the default one which is just sort of point uh, moving points with a 3D handle and so we can you know do that there grab two points keep it with a soft radius that does what we want uh, now we want to go and do other kinds so let's go and we want to do a sliding um, so ideally we're going to go edges so we're going to press 3 to get um, edge selection A to select along that line and then let's remove the soft radius now once we get there we're going to use a different mode we're going to use edge mode and that will allow us to push this along the edges uh, in along there and that's basically what this kind of edit mode does sometimes when you're you know working with the topology um, just cleaning things up like that uh, is important uh, the next thing is called the peak and it's very good for working against along the normals of your geometry so if I pick two points on opposite sides here and then I start pushing you notice how they go out along the normals instead of in th uh, along XYZ and that can be quite useful especially with an organic character to make certain edits uh, so the peak peak one is definitely worth taking a look at and you know often if you have a 3d handle you might have to go and you know do a couple edits to get what you want but a peak handle can sometimes get you there much faster now the next thing we have is sculpting uh, it's like a little sculpt tool and currently it does nothing except for that one point and the reason is the edit node only recognizes that one point at the moment so let's delete that and that doesn't solve our problem because now now no point to recognize so what we want to do is we want to press n and that puts all the points in there and once that happens now i can start sculpting um, on the whole surface now if you did want to just select certain points you could focus on that but for now we're going to do everything and there we go we can start sculpting away um, and and doing that. And then we go to smooth points. Uh, we use the middle mouse button to change the radius. And then we can sort of smooth out the results if see if that works out a little bit better. This nose is a little crooked right now, but you can see some edits in there. 
maybe the ears could use a little cleaning there we go that's a little cleaner in there a little cleaner in there so the edit node itself uh, can do all of these different modes and that's really important so um, now let's press 4 to do uh, faces and I just want to show one thing about this is if we go to move these faces or primitives uh, and we want to do the soft radius thing we talked about before that is not possible uh, it only works with points so just want you to be aware of that so now we have um, the, this here let's see what the original um, pig's head was like and let's see our edited version and uh, so that's that's the culmination of what we've done so far now what's important to notice is that the edit node um, did many different kinds of changes uh, and just layered them one on top of the other top of the other now we're putting down something called a soft transform node and this one is more like a traditional procedural node in Houdini where it has a specific group of points and does and works on them so in this case 314 to 316 whereas the edit node every time you make a new selection it just layers that on top of the other one so the edit node ends up being a bit little bit less procedural because it's hard to change the topology feeding into an edit sop whereas a transform sop um, has a little more flexibility from a procedural point of view but it's more work because you you're every time you want to do a different edit you have a, you need a new node whereas the advantage of the edit node is every time you do a new edit you're using the same node and so it's easier in that way and uh, there is also a, just a normal transform um, node exists as well if you just want to move some points uh, or move some edges and again this is not um, this does not accumulate the way that the edit node does uh, but sometimes you just need to move something and you want to be able to go back and make exactly that move with those exact points um, then sometimes a transform node uh, makes more sense than the edit node and here we are making more edits um, which can be like I said layered on top of each other and they also have access to the soft transform right there in the edit node now you have a understanding of how to uh, transform both objects uh, and geometry uh, within Houdini.